it's time to gaze into the past, the future and the present simultaneously as I look at some zinchi goodness. Welcome to War Games on Toast, all you lovely people, it's me, it's Toast, how are you this wonderful Wednesday? Today we are looking at man, mutant and ogroid as we pour over the infinite knowledge of the Arcanites of Zinch. These are by far one of my favourite looking factions in Warcry, but are they any good? Well, we will soon find out, but before that, please consider hitting like, comment and subscribing as that helps me fight against that dastardly YouTube algorithmic demon. And if you want to help support the channel in a more tangible way, then please consider joining my Patreon and YouTube members like all of these awesome people on screen now. You will receive cool benefits like members only online content, videos and a say on future projects and monthly giveaways. But with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. As always, we start with their reaction and their reaction is called Twist of Fate. This reaction has a super cool name and a fairly interesting effect. Twist of Fate allows you to react once you are targeted. Then you can change the value of one of your doubles to the value of one of those hit dice. This is super cool, but kinda hard to really make use of. Firstly, the downside of this effect is that it's very random and you have to choose to react before any rolls are made. Dude could just roll like pants and then you've wasted a reaction. Zinch works in mysterious ways and apparently he is not your friend all of the time. Then you have restrictions. This reaction can only buff doubles, which is fair for balance, but in faction there are very few doubles that rely on ability dice. So with all that said and done, is Twist of Fate any good? Not really. It has some very niche play in faction and some interesting funk with allies if you go looking, but honestly, you'll likely just end up using counter instead. Which is sad because the more dice a person rolls, the more reliable Twist of Fate becomes, but at the same time, the more powerful counter becomes, so at no point does Twist of Fate really break from that looming universal shadow. Before I dive into units, I really wanted to check out some of their core abilities, the abilities that everyone can use, and first up we have the uttered words of power. This ability is a double and it is really cool. For your next attack action, you gain plus one strength and plus one attack. If you are hitting on a four or a five, then this is likely better than onslaught. You bump yourself up a probability bracket and you still gain an increase in attack output. If you're already hitting on a 3 plus though, then Onslaught is always the way to go. It's a funky utility tool that lets your guys swing up, which is always nice. The next two are only usable by heroes, but since there are a lot of heroes, it's worth covering them now. Locus of Sorcery is pretty darn solid. It lets you add half the value of your double to your next missile attack action strength. Arcanites have a lot of ranged heroes with strong damage profiles and being able to bump their strength is quite powerful. I like this a lot and it's one of the few abilities in the faction that interacts with Twist of Fate, which is always nice. Lastly, we have Master of Destiny and this is a triple and it's bad. It lets you spend a triple to make the ability value of other fighters count as higher up to a maximum of six. But again, there aren't that many abilities that work in this way and even if there was, spending an expensive triple to do it feels like a bit of a waste of ability dice. I am not a fan of this at all. With all of that out of the way, we can now get to the meaty, feathery core of this warband, starting with their heroes and kicking it all off with the Skyfire Aviarch, we get something that is easily described as kinda bad. Uh, this thing is 290 points and does very, very little at first glance. A 4424 melee profile is not great for a model that's almost 300 points. In a similar vein, its defensive profile is also kinda crap too. Toughness 4 and 22 wounds is very underwhelming. He does have movement 10 and fly, which is very strong, but he is the most expensive way to get movement 10 and fly in the warband. 
He does have some redeeming qualities though. His ranged profile is interesting. 3425 at 20 inches is very long range and it even comes with a very low minimum range. This combos well with Locus of Sorcery to increase that strength so you can hit more reliably for chip damage. He also has access to Guided by the Future which allows him to increase the damage and crit damage of his next attack action, melee or ranged, by half the value of the dice. This brings his maximum range damage to 5-8, which is nothing to scoff at considering the range of the attack, the number of shots, and the strength. Ideally, you would bring a plus 1 strength blessing, further increasing its cost to make this uber shot more reliable. With all of that said, funky combo included, is the Aviarch worth it? Not really, he's simply too expensive. He's fun and usable in casual or narrative play for a high powered fast moving sniper, but outside of that he is beyond opulent for what he brings to the table. Next we have the enlightened Aviarch on the disc of Zinch, another very expensive model but one that's much easier to recommend than the Skyfire simply because it's cheaper, tougher and better in combat. This guy has a range 2 5424 melee profile that should be buffed with plus 1 strength wherever possible and rocks a toughness 4 26 wound defensive line with movement 10 and fly. For 275 points he's actually rather okay if a little bit on the expensive side for his raw stats. But then you get to the funky stuff. Of course he gets uttered words for the strength and attack boost but his ability, guided by the past, is where things are really at. This increases the damage and crit of his next melee attack action by the full value of the dice. That's right, he can go to a 4, 5, 8, 12 profile beat stick, providing the enemy has already activated. That's a big clause, but damn is that a powerful hit. You give this guy plus one strength and he goes to town on most things. That's ludicrous potential damage output and it's very fun to mess around with. And remember, movement 10 and fly and range 2 means he can really get where he needs to be and then delete the sun from the earth's orbit. That being said, there are cheaper ways to get a similar kind of damage output in Arcanites and I'll get to them later. Even then though, this guy is very interesting and very fun to use. The Gaunt Summoner on Disc of Zinch is 255 points and he is not really worth that. He has a 4424 melee and a 2336 range profile, with the range part being the best part and also the part that's found on practically every single character going forward. He is only toughness 3, but he has 28 wounds and he can fly and has movement 10, which is just standard stuff. I just don't like him, uh, the range attack is the real draw here and it's a really common draw as we will soon see. His triple is Warp Tongue Blade which gives him a very reliable way to deal some bonus melee chip damage. It's kind of fine, it's just not worth spending the 255 points on. I would rather spend more to get something more impactful or spend less and get something more interesting. The Fate Master is yet another dude on disc and another dude who is very expensive and isn't actually all that good. This guy has no range attacks which is not great and has a rather meh melee profile of 4425 and sure it's range 2 but yeah, toughness 4 and 25 wounds is also fine. You take a Fate Master for his quad which increases the attack characteristic of visible friendly fighters by 1 within 9 inches which is really bad, you can get this ability or very similar abilities for cheaper and on a triple by taking allies. So what does this leave us with? A bad model you should ignore. The final two disc models are the Zango Shaman and the Magister. There is a 5 points difference in price between the two and they are very, very similar in terms of stats. And of course they both have access to Locus of Sorcery to buff their range attack and Uttered Words to buff their melee damage output. They have no unique abilities and are still kind of expensive for what they bring to the table. If you want a cool hero on disc then just take an enlightened Aviarch. If you want solid range stuff then take one of the guys we are going to talk about in a second. The Ogroid Thaumaturge is the first guy I can categorically say is actually kind of good. This guy is 225 points, has toughness 4, 
and 32 wounds. He's a fairly tough cookie and backs it up with a 4525 melee profile at range 2 and the standard Zinch range profile. This dude loves to use Uttad words and locusts of sorcery and a simple plus one strength blessing on his melee attack turns him into a fairly decent melee fighter. Strength 6 is nothing to scoff at. His unique ability is kind of interesting too, a double called Brutal Rage. This can only be used if he has taken 15 or more wounds in battle, but in return he can increase his attack's characteristic by one, permanently. This is obviously better than Onslaught from the moment you use it and it only grows in power the longer you are alive. This is a very cool ability but sadly it only works on melee attacks so don't get any smart ideas about making a machine gun wizard. Overall though this is a really cool dude and I very much like what this guy brings to the table. Now I really like the Thaumaturge but the existence of that dude does not invalidate the funky stuff the Cursling Eye of Zinch brings to the table. For 205 points you get a decent melee profile, a short ranged wizard bolt, toughness 5 and 28 wounds. This dude is just super solid, he even has a range 2 on his melee profile. He has no unique abilities so he really is just a ball of stats but he's a solid ball of stats and one that's well worth taking. I like the Thermitage more simply because I like Unga Bunga Ogroid Wizard as a concept but the Cursling does work. Let's keep this one short and sweet, the Enlightened Aviarch is the foot variant of the disc dude who can deal a bajillion damage in melee with Guided by the Past. This guy is 75 points cheaper, just as good in combat, slightly less durable but is only movement 5 and does not come with fly. Despite his mobility cut this guy's actually pretty good, his damage is outstanding. The only issue is getting to the thing you want to hit but with movement 5 you are still pretty good at doing that. It might just take you a little bit longer than having a disc. He's the first budget enlightened we've seen and I dig what he brings but there's an even cheaper dude who we will get to later on. The Gaunt Summoner and the Magister are the foot versions of their disc variants and they are pretty good. They are much cheaper and the two cheapest ways to get that rather swanky Zinch range profile into a list. But that's really all they bring. If you wanted something cheap that does decent range damage then these are the guys you want to bring. The final two characters are the Kyric Adept and the Twist Braith. These two chaps are solid mostly because they are the cheapest leaders we have access to but neither are actually all that good and neither have any unique abilities. But if you want a cheap leader, then these are your two choices. They have a place purely because of that, so that's a thing I guess. With all the heroes out of the way, let's look at the fighters. Sadly, some repetition will sink in because this is the compendium and the compendium is nothing if not bloated and a bit repetitive. So let's rapid fire some of these then. The Zango Skyfire is much more reasonable than the hero version but he loses a ranged attack which makes him way less reliable and interesting when using Guided by the Future. I would give this guy a skip. The Zango Enlightened on and off disc are the squishy versions of the hero variant with one less attack and 50 points cheaper in both cases. Still these guys are very good because Guided by the Past is really really strong. I would consider sticking to the plus one strength blessings to make them more reliable but plus one attack is also rather cheap on these guys and makes them very comparable to their hero counterparts at a hefty discount. And now we get to something new, the Zango with Savage Great Blade is kinda funky, for 105 points you get a 3425 melee profile on a 15 wound body with movement 5 which is kinda cool. The toughness 3 is a bit of a downside but he's very takeable. I think the main issue here is that he's a mid range fighter that is competing with far more impactful mid range fighters within his faction whilst also competing with cheaper fighters who aren't all that much worse. If you have some points left over though, upgrading a chaff dude to a great blade isn't a bad choice. He's kinda solid. Kyric Adepts come in 5 variants and all 5 are awful. These are irredeemably bad. 90 points for this defensive and offensive profile is terrible. They are far too expensive for what they bring to the table and they do not fill their role as chaff at all. 
The only interesting one is the Vulkark because of his ability, Vulkark. This prevents disengaging and has some interesting play. It's very similar to a net with a few more steps to get it to work. Some factions really like to disengage, for example, Hunters of Huanshi and the Wildercore. You can use the Vulkark to lock down the models you want to kill, but it's also very slow on the tempo side and it also advertises who you are intending to murder. So there's a lot of downsides to this ability, but it has some play maybe, which is more than can be said for literally every other adept. For 85 points, the Zango Mutant isn't bad. Movement 5, 15 wounds and a 4314 attack profile. Like it's not good, but it's almost chaff. The big draw here is his Vicious Beak ability, which is a double that does damage on a 4+. It's an okay ability that can elevate the threat value of the mutant beyond any of the other chaff models in the warband. I definitely wouldn't scoff at taking them, but more often than not, I'm likely going to take one of the cheaper options. Speaking of which, we have the Zango with Shield and the Zango with Savage Blades. These are the last fighters and funnily enough, they are likely to be the best. They are both good, one gets more attacks but less toughness and vice versa. The shield version is 80 points and the savage blades variant is 75. They come with 15 wounds and are just good value models all things considered. I especially like the shielded variant because toughness 4 and 15 wounds is fairly hard to shift and you can get your damage from other sources. This guy is here to be chaff and to be a bit of a wall and he does that very well. If you are short on points though, downgrade to Savage Blades because even with Toughness 3, 15 wounds is very, very nice. These guys are super solid and I like them a lot. Overall, the Arcanites of Zinch are a really mixed bag. I would hesitate to call the selection of stuff we have here good. There's some very good stuff in here, but there's also a fair amount of crap. Uh, it feels like your standard bloated compendium faction, right? The big winners are of course the Enlightened, just all of them. These guys with Guided by the Past are hilariously good. And then you have your good chaff and you have things like the Ogroid Thaumaturge who are also pretty darn solid too. But going beyond just the faction, we look at allies. And for allies, you have a wealth of chaos stuff you can take. Old reliables like the Varen Guard exist. Fast moving, tough, burst potential, you know the score. This guy can fix most things and there's a reason he operates in many chaos lists. The same goes for the Formroid Crusher and the Ogroid Myrmidon. Very powerful melee threats that are hard to kill. These are key if you want to buff the durability of your warband, but remember your chaff isn't the cheapest so you can't offset the cost of these models by filling in the gaps. Well, you can, you just can't do it as effectively as some other factions. Cheaper allies also exist though, like the Myrmodesh Painmaster, who is just super solid, and True Bloods, which bring great nets. I have a battle report on the channel against Arcanites that uses a really funky combo using the Kuriarchs, who are from the Chaos Legionnaires. These chaps are good in combat, very hard to shift, especially with blessings, and come with a few funky abilities to help support the pack. The most interesting is Dark Pact, which is very cheap but combos surprisingly well with the Arcanites because they can turn doubles into better doubles. Dark Pact scales off ability value so you can fuel your Decuriarch and his wonky range prowess for a good time. That combo comes from the mind of Tuff Tootin Baby from the Warcry Discord. I have conjured up two lists I think are actually pretty darn fun. The first one is called Ogroids Only and it is literally two Ogroid Thermaturges and two Ogroid Myrmidons. This is a four man warband that is more meme than competitively viable but it's a lot of fun and it can hit very hard. Powerful range attacks combined with big bodies and big damage means you can kill most things pretty darn easily. Plus, as you take damage, you can gain benefits because both kinds of Ogroids get kinda pissy when they are hurt. You can of course make some adjustments to tighten this list up, drop a single Ogroid and you have enough points to fill in a bunch of chaff or take some enlightened. It's a super fun time, give it a go. Next up is Big Boy Assassin and Chaff. 
This list has an Ogroid Thaumaturge, an Enlightened on Disc of Zinch with plus one strength, three Zangor with Shield, and three Zangor with Savage Blades. This warband has 9 models and is exactly 1000 points. You have a lot of durable models, a cool assassin on disc, and a burly ogroid. Again, not the most competitive thing going, but it's kinda cool. The strength blessing on the enlightened really elevates him into an effective assassin and since you have 9 models, you can effectively out-activate many warbands to make use of guided by the past. The sheer bulk of your 15 wound models is one of your main strengths, but still try to avoid combat as much as possible with them and stick to the objective. You want these guys to survive so you can maintain your model advantage and those 15 wounds as good as they are will drain if you have them in combat all the time. Like always, these lists are just a jumping off point. Take them, tweak them or simply make your own and have a great time. And that's it, that's the end of the video. Arcanites of Zinch are in a weird place. They have a lot of really poor picks, namely most of the things that are human and most of their leaders, frankly. They are also really expensive for what they are across the board. They have some cool tricks and those cool tricks are rather fun. And remember, like many kinda average warbands, they like their staple allies to cover up a lot of their shortcomings. Still, I do like them, although I am far more likely to dabble in a more casual setting where I can run a stupid Skyfire sniper list and have a good time doing it. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and members who help the channel grow and improve. A massive shout out to the Algorithmic Demon Slayers, Armor Enthusiast 7, Brioche, Head Knight of Paint, Ki Plang, Kitty Cowan Prakamakul, Long Run Hobbies, Lord Phylax, Rob, Scully Gaming and Velas. Until next time lads, ladies and everybody in between and beyond, I will see you in the next video. Ta-ra.